Okay, it's day 148 of this honeydew germination experiment. And next to my other plant, the sweet potato vines, you can see this uh, honeybee struggling. It looks like a European honeybee, uh, pretty standard. There are hives in the riparian zones around here, but you know, I'm really worried that they're just getting poisoned. I don't know if they're trying to drink from the water trays that have insecticides in them or what. I can try to help this fellow up, but I think he's gotten right side, I mean, she's gotten right side up. They're all female workers, um, but she keeps getting turned upside down like, you know, a beetle or something. So I can provide something for her to climb back and get back on her feet, but I'm not sure what she'll be able to do after that. So I put her on this flower, but I don't know if she can make it. I don't even know if she can fly anymore. Or is this just another case of, you know, straggler bees on their last legs coming here to basically die? You know, so I'm kind of worried that they're getting poisoned by the pesticides that I sprayed a long time ago. It says they're effective for like nine months. Yeah, so she's kind of agitated. She's just crawling around on this honeydew flower. And doesn't look like she's really able to collect pollen or that's just not on her mind right now. So while we're waiting for her to either recover or fail again, I'm just going to start focusing on other areas and talking about other things. So as I said earlier, it's day 148 and these leaves in the pot look a lot healthier. They've perked up a little bit in just 48 hours after me, you know, basically moving these into the shade. Not only that, but the ends of vines 1 and 2 look healthier as well. There's been a lot more leaf development. Uh, the leaves have been growing bigger. I think the plants were basically in stasis, um, just baking in the sun when all these top leaves were turning yellow. So some of the leaves are perkier now. You know, they're kind of folded uh, convex instead of concave. And, you know, they're a little bit darker green. All of these leaves near the Shude Palmer stem for vine one are bigger now. As for vine 2, it has more flowers, um, so I think just having these baking in the sun and having all these leaves turn yellow and kind of convex was basically stunting the development of everything. And I don't think these plants would have survived if I had kept them in the sun for a few more weeks. Everything was turning yellow. Uh, I don't know if all of these leaves can be rescued. Uh, there are some that are probably fried beyond repair, you know, over there. And, you know, there's some dead tendrils in the area as well, but, you know, these are still great serviceable leaves, and I hope they turn a darker green. You know, just for comparison, you can look at these sweet potato leaves, and they're really, really big and robust in comparison. And honeydew just has more brittle leaves that are hairier, so, you know, at this juncture over here, um, vine number three produced this leaf, this leaf, and this leaf. So that's unprecedented, but we've talked about that before. And over here you have the shoot ape glomerosum. So these leaves are still relatively small. And here's one. But, you know, the old order of things has been restored. I mean, there's two tendrils now which this vine didn't have before. It's still pretty early in the game for vine 3, and then, you know, it's it's gone back to this system where it alternates, you know, with just one leaf per juncture. So if we go over here, you know, this leaf is kind of fried. Um, this one 
was kind of fried as well. I mean, it's doing okay. Uh, none of the leaves are dying or dead, but these were kind of damaged by being in the harsh sun for too long, and that's why the development has been further stunted for Vine 3. So this European honeybee female has been struggling like this for the entire time I've been talking. Yeah, I don't think she's going to make it. I mean, she doesn't even seem interested in getting pollen anymore. It's just she's uh, probably affected by this pesticide, if I'm right. But if she didn't try going in the water tray, um, that means she only wanted to collect... Uh, you know, nectar from these flowers and pollen. And basically that would mean that the pesticide somehow works its way through the entire system of the plant to poison that stuff. Well, it appears now she is trying to get some nourishment and hopefully she can be energized and be on her way if that was the problem. So I've never really observed this process uh, up close and personal for long, you know, when there's a bee, a bumblebee, carpenter bee, and a flower outside, and I'm filming it. I'm just kind of fascinated for the moment, but you know, I've never gotten close enough for long enough to see what's actually going on. If you look at one of its limbs, I think the hind limbs, one of the upper segments you can see a bunch of uh, pollen collected on it it has that yellow fuzz so this bee has had a few minutes to do something and recharge her batteries while I've been talking about the yellow onion germination experiment and I think I'm gonna try using my uh, floss stick to let her grab onto the stick and transfer her to a flower on vine number two so I tried doing that and she won't budge, she won't grab onto anything I stick in there. She's not trying to sting the plastic floss stick either. She's just kind of burrowed in there and won't budge. Even if I turn this flower upside down and tap. So I'm just going to leave her here and hope she can re-energize and maybe even spend the night and find her way somewhere else. And maybe pollinate vine too if she hasn't already. Um, otherwise I might find a dead bee, you know, right here. I don't know if she can die in the flower or if she'll drop out. But, um, yeah, there's not much I can do at this point. Okay, it's day 153 of this honeydew germination experiment. So as you can see, these leaves look a lot greener. They basically sort of regenerated their previous vigor. They're not all yellow and frail like they used to be brittle, I mean. So, you know, this one had a few terrace before and sunspots, but now it's green and it's sort of, um, you know, convex instead of a concave. So that's a good sign. And this leaf is just too big to do that, I guess. But, um, yeah, some of these tendrils are kind of fried and dying. They're very brittle. But by and large, most of these leaves have recovered. You know, that's a good example. That's a good example. Um, you know, here's a leaf right here that's basically dying because it's touching the soil and it's in a bad position. You know, there are some like that. So, let's see. Actually, this leaf right here is the one that used to be super green for vine number three, and it's dead now. Kind of hard to remove that with one hand, but um, I'll just get rid of that. And see, this leaf is in bad shape. Here's another one, but it has, you know, healthy stem. I'm not gonna try to pull on anything that has a healthy stem. Um, vine number three is doing great. You know, it extends all the way here. Yeah, it's got this place where it has three leaves coming out of the same node. And it goes all the way here and it's trying to come up again uh, due to, you know, phototropism to get to the sun. 
but as I've already demonstrated, too much sun is a bad thing for honeydew vines. And, you know, I drew an analogy to the California wild grape vines. And those grow mostly in the shade and climb trees. Um, so I think in nature, whatever was the progenitor of this plant in the wild probably spent a lot of time in the shade, much like I have it now. So the new leaves are obviously doing the best um, because they haven't been through a cycle of damage, uh, sun damage to be more specific, and these new leaves all look great. Uh, these are the ends of vines 1 and vine 2. So you can see the leaf shape here is kind of funny. I don't know why that is. But uh, that one's kind of that way too. It just seems like maybe the flower production is sucking a lot of resources away and these leaves come out underdeveloped, unlike that. And you know, that's a good leaf too. So I don't know why that is. I don't have any familiarity with this uh, kind of scenario. So for vine number one, you know, uh, this leaf looks like it's kind of weird, maybe a little underdeveloped. But you know, it doesn't have that problem as bad, so I'm not quite sure what's going on. Um, I haven't seen any bees lately, so I don't know if they're coming, but I surmise they must be because I've already found three bees. You know, that bee that was there earlier face down in uh, one of these flowers. It's probably one of these already. It fell off. Um, yeah, I put it in there and it was drinking, you know, its last sips of nectar and it died in that position and after an hour or two and stopped moving. So I disposed of that. That was the third bee corpse. So I'm pretty sure bees are coming here and hopefully not just as their final resting place. So here's another leaf that died and is uh, kind of rotting away. It's got a healthy sort of stem attachment still. Oh, not really. Okay, so I got rid of that. And that's less of an eyesore to look at right now. So the water situation is still good. I'm kind of rocking the tray just to show you the water level. It's still very high. Uh, the honeydew plants don't need nearly as much water as the sweet potato vines, which are enormous in comparison. And you can see some roots have gone on into the water dish. So here's my current configuration. You know, you have the sun up there. It comes in through this balcony. And then I have the yellow onion placed here. I think I'll move that. So here's my sweet potato experiment. It's doing great. And you'll notice it's basking in reflected light. Ginger, not so much, but it's basically from all the glass here on this window. So what I'm going to do is uh, exchange positions and move it to here because the majority of the reflected sunlight seems to be in the center area. So I've rearranged this position and it'll bask in some of that reflected sunlight and do even better, I think. It needs partial light and shade so to speak, so full sunlight, especially in Southern California is too much for this. And the vines um, have been repositioned. They're basically gonna right themselves and try to face the sun again, but I don't want them getting too close to these uh, sweet potato vines and becoming a tangled mess.